All right, so in this video, we're gonna do random walks again, uh, but we're gonna do it in, uh, in Python. We're gonna do it in our uh, notebook file. So here's my notebook file. In this, in order to uh, do what we're gonna do, I'm gonna import NumPy, as in P, and import pandas, pandas as PD. And uh, whenever we do our, uh, you know, let's do uh, from matplotlib, import pyplot as plt you could do this import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt or from uh, matplotlib import pyplot as plt either one would work they're, they're both fine let's do um, matplotlib in line and uh just because let's um let's change our style to a uh, seaborn dark grid that's what it is yep all right so for our um for our first example for our first example let's do the um the uh, process right out here let's do uh, xt is equal to this is, again this is going to be a random walk uh, it's going to be equal to uh, the previous value of x plus let's do a u t where uh, let's say uh are you ut is iid discrete uniform so u u of t u is going to be a discrete uniform random variable uh that's going to go from negative one to one which means it could be negative one zero or one <clears throat> so this is going to be our um no oh, what did i do here that's that. all right so this is going to be our uh, our first one so let's um, let's do uh, how we're we gonna do this. We're gonna do um, let's do 100 periods or 100. Uh, maybe this is days. So let's do 100 days. Let's uh, do x. Let's initialize it with a matrix of zeros. So numpy as zeros. Give it a capital T, which is our 100. So what this is going to do is create a matrix or an array of zeros. And each of these zeros. So we're gonna start at zero. Um, so this is going to be x0. I'm going to put that up here. Let's say x sub 0 is equal to 0. So our initial value for x is going to be 0. So now x1, which is going to be this one right here, this is going to be um, the previous value of x plus ut, which is going to be a random discrete number, a random integer from negative 1 to 1. So it could be negative 1, 0, or 1. Uh, so let's uh, now let's do a loop. So let's say for t in range uh, one to capital T. So in case you uh, uh, just to, just to kind of show what we're doing, um, in case you forgot some of the stuff you knew about loops from before. So we're gonna go through and and, and we have t. So each value of t is gonna start at one and it's gonna go to ninety nine because it goes up to but not including. Uh, the capital T in this case 100 so up to but not including 100 which would be 99 so we're gonna do this 99 times and we're gonna say we want that uh, teeth element so XT within that array we want it to be equal to the value before it so T minus 1 plus UT where UT is going to be a random integer so we're gonna use numpy dot random dot random integer we're gonna go at the low the low is going to be negative one, and the high, it goes up two, but not including high. So if we want one, we want to go up two, but not including two. And this will do it. Then after we uh, do the loop, let's plot it. So let's plot our array X and see what it looks like. <clears throat> so this is, uh, this is our random walk. This is a random walk where x, we have a process x, and it's gonna be the sum of the previous value of x plus, plus our um, ut, which is iid to street uniform. Let's, let's run it again, and uh, we'll see a different shape, but these are just uh, random walks. <coughs> so now, now let's do it again, but this time, instead of, um, instead of u and x, let's do it with a, uh, with a z. And let's say uh, something that follows a, uh, a uh, normal distribution that way it looks a little bit more uh, more like what we're what we're used to seeing in finance so now let's say um 
So let's do a different process. So in this process, we're going to say zt, where z of t is equal to the previous value of z, so, so uh, t minus 1, plus, this time let's do uh, epsilon sub t. And in this, let's say uh, the initial value for z is equal to 0. And let's say uh, where, let's say our epsilon, epsilon t, so this is the uh, little e looking thing. Let's say it's iid, this time it's going to be standard normal. So this would mean that um, the standard normal distribution is the normal distribution with a mean of zero and a variance of one. <coughs> so now let's, uh, let's do this one. So let's do 100 days again. So let's do t equal 100. Let's do uh, z, uppercase z. Let's say uh, I'm just doing uppercase z so because that would be the matrix or the array that we're working with. And let's do uh, zeros again. Zeros. And we're going to have uh, 100 zeros. So we're initializing an array of zeros. And let's say for t in range, it's going to go from 1 to uh, t. Now, again, we're just doing the same thing. The only difference is we're doing z. So z of t is equal to the previous value of z. So uh, t minus 1 plus. And now instead of doing a discrete uniform random variable, now we're going to do a, uh, a standard normal. So numpy.random.normal. And default, default normal is standard normal. So the location is the mean and the scale is the uh, standard deviation. So default is a uh, standard normal distribution. So after we do it, let's plot it. We'll look at Z. And uh, here we go. So this is, uh, this is still just a, just a random walk. <clears throat> so this is, uh, again, another random walk. So now... So now we we did it with we did it with um, with uh, discrete uniform. We did it with the standard normal. So now let's let's do it um, let's do it with multiple at the same time. So let's still do a hundred days, but this time let's do three. So n equal three. We're going to do three different paths. We're going to simulate three different paths for this random walk. And again, uh, we're going to do z. So it's uh, still Z. So let's do NumPy. And let's initialize it. Uh, let's initialize. Now it's going to be a matrix of zeros. So the shape, we want there to be T many rows. So 100 rows and N many columns. So three columns. So we're going to do three different paths with T many uh, uh, periods that we're going to simulate. So now let's do... Uh, Let's do one column at a time. Let's say the jth column. So let's say for j in range n. So it's going to be 0, 1, and 2. Because remember in Python, all elements start, or the, all indexes are going to start at 0. So it's going to be 0, 1, and then 2. Now after that, let's do uh, for t in range um, 1 to capital T. So now we're going to actually uh, do the paths. So we're going to do uh, row T, column J. This is, and we're going to do one path at a time, one column at a time. Remember, it starts at zero, so we already have that value. <clears throat> and now let's do uh, Z of the previous T. Remember, we're doing one column at a time, plus our, uh, our random variable, our, our, uh, our uh, standard normal random variable. And uh, now we did it. Let's plot it, make sure it worked. And uh, there it goes. So we simulated three different paths. <clears throat> so we simulated three different paths. So whenever you um, do, uh, whenever you do this with other, um, other things, like just say now when you simulate stock prices, it, it's, it's going to be similar to this. And we're going to do that one next. But let's, uh, before we jump to that, let's do five. We are, it's already in the code. So now there's five there. And you can just play with the numbers. But now let's do, um, let's do a uh, stock price. Let's simulate a stock price as a random walk. So uh, let's import the data reader. So from Panda's data reader, import data as WB. And now let's uh, get the data from Stuk. So I'm going to say WB.data reader the name uh, IBM, 
Oh, crap. Uh, and let's say our uh, data source is going to be Stuke. This is going to be our data. Whenever you get the data, sometimes it may be the index may be sorted in descending order. You don't want that, especially if you're going to do uh, returns. It would be backwards. So we want to uh, sort the index in ascending order. We want it to be in place. Now, if we do that, let's look at the first few rows of the data. <coughs> and there it is. So we're good there. Now let's uh, let's create a pandas series. Let's call it stock prices, and this is going to be the close column. So it's going to be the closing day stock prices. And after we do that, let's uh, let's plot it. Because this is a, a uh, pandas series and pandas data frame, we can use the built-in matplotlib on it, and we can just uh, do dot plot. Look at it here. So this is uh, from 2010. So this is 10 years worth of uh, of price data. So 10 years worth of price data, and you uh, see. I, this would have been coming out of out of the uh, recession, maybe, and then, then it goes up. See, it's uh, I I picked IBM because of um, because it doesn't have a, a large large uh, large um, large periods of, of high growth. So now we did our uh, stock prices. Let's do uh, stock returns. So let's do a uh, log return. So do a log return. We we'll do the difference in log prices. So the natural log of stock prices minus the natural log of the previous stock price. So stock prices dot shift one. And this, another way to do it would have been the natural log of um, stock prices uh, dot percent change plus one. This would, they give you the same exact value. Either one will work. Now let's, uh, let's plot it. Again, because it's a, a pandas data frame or a panda series, you can just do dot plot. And here is our um, and here's our plot for that. And you can see lately that there's been an increase in volatility. That, that, that makes sense, uh, just due to due to what's what the month of March was like, uh, the, the end of March. Now let's do um, our stock returns dot describe. <coughs> you do dot describe, and now you can see. The, uh, the mean standard deviation and so on. So whenever we do this, whenever we do our, um, our simulation for stock prices, remember this is going to, um, we're gonna do it with a drift. So whenever we do a stock price, our stock price simulation, we're gonna do a drift. We're gonna do um, the model we talked about in the previous video. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the whiteboard real quick. <clears throat> So for the white, so for our uh, our model, we're going to say that um, stock returns or log return. We're going to say the log return at time t is going to be equal to um, for the drift. We're going to say the daily mean log return is going to be the drift, and then um, let's say the uh, daily standard deviation multiplied by epsilon t, which is the random part. So we can estimate the standard deviation. We can estimate the daily uh, standard deviation of stock returns or log returns. And we can, <clears throat> excuse me, so we can, uh, <clears throat> we can estimate the daily standard deviation of stock returns and we can estimate the daily mean of stock returns. And for this, for in this model, our epsilon t is gonna be IID standard normal uh, it's going to be IID with a standard normal distribution. And since, since this is a log return, so RT is going to be equal to the natural log of price of uh, time T minus the natural log of price of yesterday. And due to the, the rules of log, this would be equal to ST over, or the natural log of ST over uh, ST minus one. <coughs> So now you can plug this back in. So now this means that the natural log of ST over ST minus one is gonna be equal to the uh, drift plus um, standard deviation multiplied by our error term. <clears throat> so now you can solve for, you can solve for the stock price ST. So that means this means if this is if this is the formula for daily log returns, then that means that uh, day, that closing day stock prices could be uh, 
you could uh, use it, use this formula. So e, you get rid of e, the natural log by e to the power of all of that. You get rid of the uh, s uh, t minus one. This gives you this formula here. So this is for st. This means that if you wanted to uh, to simulate stock prices for tomorrow, st plus one, this would mean that you would just plug in uh, st. These two are estimated. You already know what the start price today is. And now you just simulate uh, your error term for tomorrow. And now if this is the random walk for stock prices, assuming that there's a, that there's a drift or, or say that the stock returns, um, log return has a drift to it, then you can use this model to, to simulate stock prices. And this isn't going to be um, perfect, but it's a... Uh, it's one way to one way to do it. At least for now. So now let's um <coughs> let's simulate the uh, the stock price. So we know our drift. We can estimate the drift. This is going to be the daily mean of uh, stock returns. We already know the standard deviation. We can estimate that. So this is going to be the standard deviation of stock returns. So we have our drift and we have our standard deviation. We already know what the closing stock price was. Let's do uh, stock prices. And let's look at the last value. And we, so the last period, so um, this may have been today. Um, so whatever, close, whatever the most recent closing period in the data is, it was $119.29. So that we know ST. We know our estimate for the drift, or our estimate for the standard deviation. So the only thing that we don't know is the random part, but that's gonna be simulated anyway. You're not, uh, not supposed to know that. So let's, uh, let's simulate 30 days of IBM stock prices. Let's, uh, let's do five paths. And now, uh, just like up here before, whenever we simulated five different paths for, uh, for this one, we're gonna do something real similar. <clears throat> you could, do, you could uh, initialize it with a, with a matrix of ones or a matrix of zeros. Either one would be fine. And we're going to have T many uh, rows, N many columns. And now the only thing that's different is the, um, the first value. The first value of our matrix is going to be equal to the most recent stock price, which we'll use negative one to get the index. Now, this, now you, you have that in the, in the data that we got from Stuke. So we know what the last day or what the most previous closing price is. So you just plug that in for the first value. So previously it was zero. The initial value was zero. Now the initial value is the most recent stock price. And we'll do uh, one column at a time. So for J in range uh, N, size N. Now we'll do for T in range, start at one, go to capital T. And now we're going to say the stock price of today in this specific path, in our Jth path, or this column. So stock price today is going to be equal to the stock price of yesterday multiplied by E to the power of drift plus the standard deviation uh, multiplied by our error term, random.normal, and which is going to be uniformly, I'm sorry, not uniform, it's going to be standard normally distributed. So now we've, uh, we've simulated stock prices. Uh, what happened here? Uh, I misspelled normal, forgot the L. So now we've, we've successfully simulated our stock price. So let's, uh, let's plot it out. We get S. I'm going to do a POT dot show so that goes away. <coughs> so now we've simulated uh, five paths for stock price. Now um, let's make it all one color. Let's make it all blue and let's make it a little bit transparent. We'll make it 5% transparent. So alpha equal 5%. You can't really see it, but let's simulate a set of five. Let's simulate uh, 100. We'll look at that. You can see that it's kind of uh, forming a shape. Now let's do 1,000. It takes a while to plot it. So now, now you can see um, <clears throat> this is simulate 1,000 paths. So this, this is, um, there is a use for this. You can use this to, uh, so this, this would be called Monte Carlo simulation. And there is a use for this. You can use it to uh, estimate uh, value at risk for your portfolio. You can uh, use it to, um, to estimate 
uh, op, uh, the price of an option. And this is uh, assuming that stock prices follow this specific random walk. But say you have a better model. Say you have a better model for the, uh, for the returns. Maybe you have a, a good model for returns and maybe you have a good model for volatility. You can take that a step further. And again, the only thing that you're gonna simulate is the, is the error term. You've already estimated all the parameters. So if you have all the parameters for your, for maybe stock returns follow an ARMA model and uh, you're using Garsh for volatility, then you could, uh, you would know what the, uh, all your parameters. So now the only thing you're going to uh, simulate is gonna be the, be, the, uh, the, be the error term. So you can just run a bunch of paths like that and maybe, maybe you could, uh, you could have used that model to get a reasonable estimate for, for the price of an option or maybe a, a value at risk of a portfolio or, um, or um, there's other uses too. And then if you just do this, if you just assume that it follows this random walk and you'd use the standard normal distribution, this actual, if you use this to price uh, an option, then um, you'll get a similar output to the black Scholes model because it assumes uh, stock prices are, um, are log normal. Uh, stock prices are log normal and um, stock returns are normal. So let's, uh, real quick, before we end this, before we end this, let's do a distribution plot. So we have S, let's look at our last, uh, last row for the very bottom. So this is our, uh, our row. If we, if we do a, uh, if we show this in a distribution plot real quick, this should look log normal. <coughs> And it's kind of hard to tell because there's uh, the mean is so high up, but this, this should be roughly a log normal distribution. And then if you, if you looked at the return, if you looked at the return of this, let's do a uh, log of this minus the, uh, over this one, if you do this, then um, this should be normal distribution. So this is a uh, standard normal distribution. <coughs> or I'm sorry, it's not standard normal, but this is a normal distribution. So whenever you do this, if you do this, uh, the basic random walk, then you're assuming that returns are normally distributed and you're assuming that stock prices are log normally distributed. And then, um, so, uh, so yeah, so this is, uh, this is how you simulate stock prices. <clears throat> In the next video, we'll go over uh, testing for unit roots. We'll go over the uh, Dickey Fuller test. And later we'll, we'll actually apply some of this and, and build a uh, time series model, or um, use stats models to uh, to build a um, to build a, a, a model. <clears throat> so that's all we're doing in this video.